Yackers, welcome to the Gak Yak, a GAC TV podcast where we yak about the Gak. I'm Chad Maurice, and today we are yakking about another great American Christmas movie. And I have a special guest with me today. We are yakking with Cricket. Cricket, what's happening, girl? Hello, Chad. Thank you so much for having me on here today. I'm so honored and feel so blessed. So thank you. <laughs> now, the reason I wanted to have you on here is because I know you are Trev Don's number one fan. I well, sure am. Well, I, I think there'd be some other people that would disagree, but yeah. as far as the Trev Dono fans, we are all like huge fans of his. So yes, I am a big fan though. And, and you and I met at Roma Drama in Nashville last summer. We did. But, um, did you go there just to meet Trevor? Is that the reason you went there? Um, honestly, in the beginning, yes, it was to meet Trevor. And then when I realized how many other Hallmark stars and, you know, GAC TV family stars are there, I just was like so amazed by it because I had never been to anything like that before. None of the conventions <laughs> or none of the rom-coms. And I was just really excited because I would finally get to meet Trevor. So, yeah, it was an amazing time. Um, Gabrielle and Susie are just phenomenal, like... I was so like amazed by that event. It really changed my opinion about rom com, rom com, excuse me. And uh, I, yeah. I love it. I love it. So you knew the other stars that were there, right? Yes, I knew about. Yeah, my I've watched Hallmark and you know now GAC Family Stars. You know for a long time. Uh, my mother and I got involved in it many years ago and she'd always call me and say, Hey, you know, you got to get online and watch that or get on the TV and watch that show because it's the same one we watched last year. So, you know, uh -huh. especially during the pandemic, like those movies are what got me through everything. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, man, if they weren't on, I mean, I, I didn't watch anything else. That was all I wanted to feel good. I wanted to feel happy, you know, and those movies did it. And, you know, of course, like in Trevor, too, because, you know, I didn't even know who he was probably four or five years ago. So I had seen him oh, in movies, didn't? but didn't oh, really okay. know. Yeah. Oh, OK. OK. Uh, so my next question was, what is it that you love so much about him and what did you what attracted to you? What attracted you to him? Instantly. So honestly, um, I had a lot of things going in my life. Um, my dad had passed in 2014. My mom passed in 2016. And when my mom passed, you know, everything came down on me. And I um, just was going through a really rough time in my life. Um, I subsequently, uh, a couple of years later, got my special needs sister who came to live with me. Um, and so my life was just kind of thrown upside down. And I actually, one of my cousins followed him and uh -huh. I was on Facebook one day and I saw the post of him hugging his dog, you know, mm -hmm. um, his dog Tito with Dogbert there and Dogbert's got his mm -hmm. hand up on his back, you know, or whatever. And it, I just started crying instantly because it was uh -huh. exactly what I needed to see. And it just helped me to release all those emotions. And uh -huh. so that's really when I started following him was because of that, you know, post on Facebook. So um, and then when I learned more and more about him as the years progressed, you know, I just felt like he was such an amazing, talented and inspirational person, you know, not just an actor, but a person. And I think that's what attracts me to his movies, to his personality. Um, he just is an amazing person. So, yeah. Oh, that's, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Now, do you have a favorite movie of his? Um, I love USS Christmas, you know, because being a veteran, um, you know, that hit home with me, um, seeing a, a man in uniform, no, you know, any man looks good in a uniform, but Trevor <laughs> rocked it. Um, but yeah, yeah. so, it, you know, his flight suit, you know, everything about it. Um, I uh -huh. like Top Gun, the movie, um, just anything military like that, the romance of that with uh, Jen Lilly. I just thought it was an amazing movie. I love that movie too. Um, I mean, I love all his movies, you know, so for me, there's there's some favorites I like um, Jingle Bell Princess, you know, like we're going to talk about like I really love that movie as well. Um, my favorite movie of his, though, is Charm uh, or Love Finds You in Charm. That movie really touched me. Love Finds You in Charm. It's I don't I don't uh, know that one. I don't know. Oh that one. my gosh, he swings an axe in there, and I mean, we're still waiting on the axe thing with uh, Ryan Pavey. There's a wait. There's got to be that, a competition there. 
Wait, is that the one where he's uh, playing an Amish guy? Yes, that is it. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay, okay. Yes. I know. I know what you mean. Okay. Yes. That was an amazing movie. Um, yeah, that was one of my favorite movies. I actually went to Kentucky um, last year, the year before, and I actually went to the same area not you know going there on purpose but by chance realized it was right down the road and kind of drove around didn't see anything but i thought it was so cool that it was filmed some of it was filmed in the caves i think down there oh no 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 i thought that one i'm sorry that's the other movie never mind sorry i'm getting them confused here I've seen so many i'm getting all the plots and storylines mixed up <laughs> now do you have a favorite co-star of his someone he's had good chemistry with um really the and i gotta remember what her name is and i should have looked this up before i got on here um, Love Finds You and Charm, his co-star, he's played with her, and I can't remember her name. It's right on the top of my head, but I can't remember. Um, but the chemistry between them two is just so natural. Um, it just okay. flows with those two. And he, and that's the one that's in Love Finds You and Charm as well. Um, they just have really great chemistry. They've done a couple, two or three movies together, I believe. Um, but yeah, she's, she's very good as well. I'm, I'm looking it up right now. Is it Daniel C. Ryan? Yes, that's who it is. Yes. Is that who it is? Yes. Ah, yes. okay. Yeah, she's amazing also. I love her as an actress. And um, but yeah, their chemistry in their movies is phenomenal. Oh. Ah, okay. They just they they mesh and blend and, and their lines just flow naturally together. And yeah, that's yeah, that would have to be my favorite co-star. I like Jen Lilly in USS Christmas as well. I thought mm -hmm. she did very well with Trevor. Um mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of anybody else in the other um, Merritt Pattinson, though. I liked her and, and Jingle Bell Princess. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. she's my favorite for sure. All right. Now, before we get going here, I need to know, is Cricket yes. your real name or is that a nickname? <laughs> yes. OK, so I'm going to tell my age when I tell you this story. Oh, so. you don't have to tell your age. <laughs> Well, no, you're going to know by the storyline or people will. <laughs> so when I was born, I was three pounds. OK, so my dad said I was jumping around in the incubator like a cricket. So when he came oh. into my mom after I, I came early because my mom actually had fell in a hole. So it forced her into early labor. So my dad comes in. Well, my mom used to watch a show called Hawaiian Eye, which I believe is a spinoff of Hawaii Five-O. Oh, so okay. on that show, it was Debbie Reynolds or Connie Stevens. Their name, their character name was Cricket on the show. So my mom loved that show. Oh. So when my dad came in, you know, and said I was jumping around like a cricket, my mom's like, that's what we're naming her, Cricket. So that's <laughs> how I got my name. A lot that of is... people don't think it's from Young and the Restless. Like, um, oh, Mike Keenan, who played. That's um, right. That's yes, right. so that's where a lot of people think I got my name, but it's that's actually right. from Hawaii. His girlfriend was named Cricket. Well, yes. That's right. I forgot yes. about that. Yes. Yeah. It's funny because he um, actually, I posted on some because he had posted something about Rock On, the song anniversary. And I'm like, oh, my mm -hmm. God, I, I love that song back in the day, you know, and uh -huh. he wrote back and he goes, oh, I love your name. And and I didn't really get the the correlation with it. And then my friend's like, yeah. that's because his girlfriend was named Cricket on the show. Yeah. And you know, the rest is, I'm like, oh, duh. I didn't that's watch right. it that much. I mean, I remember people saying that, but I didn't realize it was Michael Damien either. That's so. right. He he directed a GAC Christmas movie last, uh, yes. last fall. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I have to, I got to do a recap on that one still. All right. So here we go. All right. Let's do Let this. Bring it in here. Today we are talking about the jingle or jingle bell princess. So off the GAC website, the summary says, through a series of mishaps, sophisticated Princess Amelia is stranded in the small town of Tucker, Maine. There she becomes an ordinary guest of the unsuspecting Cutler family. It stars Merritt Patterson and Trevor Donovan, directed by Don McBreary and written by Blaine Chiapetta and James D. Hughes. All right, so I had to include this screenshot because I, I know Cricket, you, 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 you got a laugh out of this one. I did, I had to rewind it after I watched it. I'm like, wait a minute, seriously, that's the name of the production company? <laughs> I know, the production company is called A Lot of Christmas Production. <laughs> I, I literally, like, when I saw that, I'm like, wait a minute. Did I just really read what I just saw on my screen? <laughs> you you sent me that screenshot, and I'm yep. like, really? 
I was right. like, really? That's, that was the production company? And I had to look it up. And that is actually the name of the production company. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was great. I was like, that's so yeah. awesome. I know. So this movie starts out. Ah, we see an overhead shot of the sun setting. I love these overhead shots that they show in these movies. Yes, they're gorgeous, aren't they? Then we see an overhead of a small town, which we find out later is Tucker, Maine. Mm -hmm. uh, we see an airplane and we hear a pilot on an intercom addressing someone named Princess Amelia. And he tells her the plane is experiencing technical problems and that they are going to land in Maine for repairs before resuming their flight to Bowling. Oh, I meant to tell you, you can feel free to jump in and interrupt me anytime. Oh, okay. Right. No, I will. This, don't this, worry. this is the first time I've ever done this with anyone. So just, well, I, I don't know. I feel so when honored. To, Thank you. So just, so just talk whenever you want, but I'll, okay. I'll, ask, I'll ask you questions as we go along too. Okay. Oh, this good. is a cool shot. We see an overhead shot of a runway with covered with snow all around it. I thought that was a pretty neat shot there. That is. Ah, uh, we see a cool looking airplane and I think the airplane, yeah, it says Volan on the side of the airplane on one of the engines there. Ah, now we see Merritt Patterson inside the plane, and she's talking with an accent. All right, what did you think of her accent in this movie? Um, you know, I'm not a celebrity or an actress, so, uh -huh. you know, for me to give feedback on somebody else's, you know, accent is probably not a good thing. <laughs> but um, I think she did overall pretty well. I think if, uh, you know, there were people out there to really critique it, maybe she was off every now and then, but I thought she did pretty well on it. Yeah, I like the accent. It didn't bother me. Um, yes. Some some of the actors' accents, it's like, yeah, that accent like doesn't match their appearance, you know, their face. Right. It doesn't right. match like their nationality, but hers did. I thought she did fine with it. I. Yeah. No, I mean, I, she very it, acts. She's very accentuated. Like she accentuated all the the words mm -hmm. and things. So yeah, it was very believable. And yeah. you know, like I said, there was only a couple times I thought maybe she came out of it, but not mm -hmm. that many. Yeah, yeah. And halfway through the movie, I'm like, I couldn't remember what her real voice sounded like because <laughs> I was right, so used to right. the accent. <laughs> yeah. All right. So she's going by the name Amelia and she asks her aide slash assistant Marcel how long the layover will be. He says a couple of hours. She says the sooner they get home for Christmas, the better. Then she says she is going to the back of the plane to lie down. She heads to the back of the plane for a little lie down and she hears some jingle bells outside. She grabs one of the flight crew's jackets and steps outside to investigate. Yeah, can I just jump in there real quick? Yeah, yeah. My first, yeah, well, my, my first thought on this was, why is the well, door still open and it's freezing cold? But, oh, that's a good point. You yeah. know, like, I mean, honestly, right. if, if Marcel's leaving, he would have shut it, right? But I understand you got to hear the jingle bells in the background. So I get it. But I'm just thinking, uh, okay. That's Had to go with point. that one. And if they weren't getting off the plane, why would the door be open? Right. Well, oh. Marcel said he was going to go do something, but it didn't okay. really, like, convey if he was leaving or if he was actually just, you know, on the phone. Oh. or Yeah, yeah I, I thought that I... was interesting. Yeah, I never thought about that. I, I never, that didn't dawn on me. <laughs> Then we see the outside of a house decorated with Christmas lights on it. Oh, inside the house, we meet Sam, played by Trev Don and his daughter, Sophie. She wants to know if they are going out to cut down their tree. He says, you bet this is our last chance. <laughs> and immediately I thought, wait a minute, it's dark outside. <laughs> They're going to go cut down a Christmas tree in the dark? <laughs> right. I mean, have you ever cut down a tree in the dark? <laughs> I've never cut down a tree ever. Oh, you never Dark have. Light. <laughs> oh, we used to cut. We used to cut down our own tree when I was a kid. You know, it's funny. I've never had a real Christmas tree. Oh, you never have. Never. Really? We oh. always had the fake ones. Always. Oh, you're missing out. Some of you, you got to get a real. Tree. I know. I've heard they smell like incredible. And, and oh yeah. Yeah. Oh mm. yeah. Yeah. One day. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so I'm thinking most people do that in the daytime when the sun is out. So, so they can right. see the trees. Yeah. Um, I've never heard of anyone picking out a Christmas tree um, in the dark and cutting it down. I mean, e even Clark Griswold does this during the day. <laughs> <laughs> <I mean. laughs> right? Um, 
So I hope this Christmas tree farm they're going to is well lit. That's all I was thinking. Yes. So, uh, so he asked her how her <laughs> horse riding went uh, today, and she begs him for a horse of her own. He says to ask Santa for one, but says that a horse won't fit down the chimney. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Oh, next we see Amelia walking in the woods, and she it's dark, and she's looking like a flight attendant. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, and it's funny you say that because I didn't realize she grabbed the coat initially. From oh, you closet. didn't? So I'm thinking, why do they have her in this coat where she looks like she's a flight attendant? Then I'm like, okay. well, maybe they want her to look like the flight attendant to take away from the fact that she has no security around her being royalty. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. That's funny. That's funny. So I'm yeah. like, okay, where's her security detail? Like, where is it? Yeah, the first time I saw the movie, I think I missed the beginning. And so I came on like at this point and I'm like, is she a flight attendant or is she a princess? What's going on here? Right, right. <laughs> exactly. I, I, I love the coat though. It is cool. I know. I know. And she looks good in it too. She does. <laughs> uh, next we see, oh, she finds a dog with a bell on his collar. Uh, then we meet Santa, who's going by the name Fred. Wink, wink. Right. There's always a Fred somewhere. Oh, it's Fred Claus. Right. Yeah, that no. one was easy to kind of pick up, like, you know, with the jingle bells. It threw me off with the dog, but I was like, OK, Santa's got his dog. You know, he's got a dog. I'm sure he has a dog, too, that he has to walk, you know. Now, when I saw him, I thought, yes, there's a Santa in this movie. Right. <laughs> and I'm hoping I'm hoping this guy's the real Santa. Right. <laughs> I know, and you kind of, well, later on we can talk about that. But, yeah, so, yeah, I thought the same thing. And when he insinuated that maybe she heard the Santa sleigh bells, uh -huh. then I was like, oh, okay, now I'm I'm getting a little bit closer to what maybe they're trying to convey. So uh -huh. yeah. yeah, we find out the dog's name is Storm. Amelia yes. says that's an appropriate name. Yep. Uh, Fred Claus says Storm got away from him on their walk and says that Storm doesn't have a nose like Rudolph. And I'm thinking, oh, the guy, the guy knows Rudolph. This has to be Santa. Has to be him. That's right. <laughs> uh, she tells Fred uh, she heard Storm's bells that are on his collar, like you mentioned. And Fred says, well, maybe you heard Santa's uh, sleigh bells. We find out that Fred has a Christmas tree farm and a boutique that he and his wife run. Amelia says she would love to see his Christmas boutique, but she needs to get back to her plane in an hour or two. And Fred says, oh, don't worry. I'll take you there and have you back in a half an hour. So get this. So this, this is what hit me when this scene happened. So Amelia agrees to go with this total stranger she met yes. in the middle of the woods at night with no one else around. And I'm right. thinking, this sounds like the beginning of a Lifetime movie. Uh, yes, they totally could have went that way with it. I mean, it, it, it could have went that way. Because I'm thinking you're a princess and you're going to go with a complete stranger in the middle of the woods, get in his car that may not have door locks, you know, like know. they, you know, just know. a little scary. I but, know. you know, you got to think back in your head. It is a GAC family. So, oh, yeah. movie, so oh, yeah. she's going to be okay. <laughs> and I'm also thinking, but hey, he can't be a serial killer. He owns a cute dog, and he looks like Santa Claus, right? That's true. You can't go wrong with the dog and the and the beard, you know. You just can't. <laughs> yeah, so I thought I thought that was pretty funny. So she just agrees to go with him. Uh, so she heads to Fred's boutique, and it just so happens that Sam and Sophie are also at this boutique slash Christmas tree farm. Sophie runs into a friend of hers named Libby. And Sam thanks Libby's parents for letting Sophie come to their house to ride horses. Sam says he and Sophie miss living next door to a riding instructor. And Sam mentions to them that he and Sophie didn't get a tree last year. Hmm, why didn't they get a tree? Hmm, there's the first question that comes up. Yep. Uh, we then learn that he and Sophie are living at his mom's house because they are getting their house renovated. And immediately I thought, why would they need to leave their house if it's getting remodeled? Right. Usually you don't have to leave your leave your house when it's getting remodeled because usually you just have one room done at a time, don't you? Right. Well, and yeah. without knowing the background of the story either until we find out later, it, it mm -hmm. is like a question in your mind, like, why are you yeah. thinking? Okay. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. 
Libby's mother asks Sam if he and Sophie will be attending the town's Christmas Eve party, and he says, ah, we'll see. Now, another, now again, I think, we'll see, Sam, what do you have against Christmas parties? Man? Right, Is right, guy you start a thinking a little bit like he's against Christmas, and you don't know. know why. I know, why? And you're like, he, you're he, such he, a handsome guy, why would you not want to be a part of Christmas? I know, or did he have something bad happen at Christmas, something? That's right, and then you do, you start speculating in your head, okay, maybe there's more to it, so we'll wait mm -hmm. and see. Yeah, 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 because <laughs> everybody loves a Christmas party. Yeah. All right. So then we see Amelia shopping. She notices the time and realizes she has to get back to the airport. Sam literally grabs her around her waist as she is leaving and spins her around. Uh, Sophie and her friend run up. They say they found a majestic tree. Whoa, majestic. That's a big word for a little kid. Right? <laughs> no. I was like, wow, this tree must be like, like the, oh, you know. I know. I know. <laughs> Oops, sorry. <laughs> Sam well, the meal, Sam before the that meal, though, when he, right. what? before he ran into her though, and after, are you getting to that part? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interject there if it's not where oh, you're going. Go ahead. Um, but she actually like ran into him and he like caught her just in time because she was gonna go down. Yeah. Like yeah. so, but yeah, go yeah. ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh Sam asks if she's all right. She says she is. Amelia goes back to the airport and asks where her plane is. Now, how did she get back to the airport? Did Fred Claus take her back? I don't know. They, they, they never said. Um, yeah, they never said. But I wanted to back up for a minute on that last what? scene. So yeah, yeah, what? When he's like ran into her, she like, I know she was like in a time crunch trying to get back to the airport, but she was a little bit snippy, like almost to the point where, you know, Sam looks at her and was like, wow, like I'm trying to be nice to you and you're just being so short with me. You oh, know, but I get... thought, whoa. Oh, you know? did you get and that so, impression? Yeah, oh, I did a little okay. bit. Yeah. Oh, all right. But you know, she's used to being like her time, her schedule, as they call it, the schedule. I don't know how they say it, but <laughs> but um, but yeah, I did get that a little bit right there. Like they were gonna butt heads right there. Like they were oh, gonna get along. Okay. All right, that's interesting. That's interesting. So yeah, she goes back to the airport. That's where her plane is. Yeah, she flew back there. You know, you didn't see that part, but the jingle bells and the, the, the magic fairy dust took her over. <laughs> I know. The ticket agent says all the flights have been canceled and your plane took off an hour ago. Apparently, they left without checking if she was on board or not. She asks if they can radio her plane. The attendant says, no, the storm is interfering with radio signals and the blizzard is going to shut down the entire state of Maine for a couple of days, I'm thinking, whoa, Maine is a big state. This storm is going to shut. It's not going to shut down just one or two cities. It's shutting down the whole state. The whole state. That's and, right. And, and for two days. Now, how does this ticket agent know that the storm is going to shut down the entire state for two days because the blizzard just started? I'm thinking, right. is this woman psychic? Is she from right. Dion Warwick? <laughs> right. Exactly. She knows something we don't, for sure. I know. She knows. <laughs> She knows something everyone else does. Well, what's the other one? Sylvia Brown? She was also a good one. So <laughs> maybe she read her book. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, then we see Sam. He's looking at a picture of Sophie with a woman who we can assume is Sophie's mom. Yeah, that would be hard. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, especially around the holidays. Yes. We find out that the ticket agent at the airport is Sam's mother. Oh, what a coincidence. <laughs> and she took Amelia home from the airport. What? Again, she took a total stranger right. home. She met at the airport and invited her to her right. home to stay with them. So right. the, the Lifetime movie continues. Yes, <laughs> correct. Because then you're going, okay, here's, here's her second chance at, like, you know, not having a good ending because... Now she's going home with a complete stranger she just met, like you said. But, you know, I don't know. She's a brave girl. That's all I got to say. I know. She's going, <laughs> she's going everywhere with total strangers. I know. Right. Um, so this struck me as weird. When Sam and Amelia meet, they don't acknowledge that they met before at the Christmas tree farm. Amelia doesn't say anything. She doesn't say, like, hey, you're the one who grabbed my waist at the Christmas boutique when I was shopping. And Sam doesn't say, hey, you're that hottie that I grabbed. Nothing. Right, right. <laughs> hey, like, I know you. I met you before. Are you okay? I know. You in my house. Like, I know. They just look at each other. 
and then just start talking. They don't have a strange reaction on their face or anything. Right. The only reaction was Sam looking at his mom going like, why'd you bring somebody home? Yeah. Yeah. He <laughs> looks at his mother. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought that was a little, little weird mm -hmm. there. Okay. We also find out that Sam did chop down a tree in the dark at the Christmas tree farm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Amelia says, uh, tell Sam it was nice of his mother to offer her a place to stay, but not to worry. She won't stay long. Sam tells her the storm is going to be severe, and Amelia acts shocked, even though Annie, <laughs> Sam's mother, told her at the airport that the storm was going to shut down the entire state for two days. days right. But Amelia gets this shocked look on her face, like, ooh, oh no. I mean, she right. already was told this once. <laughs> right, like she forgot. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Amelia mentions her people to Sam, and he asks who her people are, and she says, my family. Right. Well, I don't understand. Why doesn't she just say as soon, right when she met him right there in the house that she was a princess? Why didn't she just tell him that? What's the difference? Um, my take on that was possibly um, because she doesn't know these people and she is trying to be a little bit cautious that maybe telling them that she's a princess would cause, you know, conflict of some sort. I don't know. Maybe don't she's know. just trying to be protective of her identity. I don't know. Yeah, that's another. That's one thing I didn't understand throughout the movie because she's only going to be there for a couple of days and then she's flying home. And I right. Know, I, don't, I don't think they would treat her any differently if they knew she was a princess. Well, you know, and some people say like with royalty, whatever, that some people do treat them differently. So maybe yeah. she was just trying to be in the normal uh, everyday life and not portray a princess. You know what I mean? Like yeah. have to deal with that kind of take on, you know, what people think of her. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Could be, could be. So he asks how she got stranded. Oh, when she, when he asked, oh yeah, I said that. She says my family. He asked her how she got stranded and she says her plane left without her and explains they thought she was on board in her private quarters. <laughs> and Sam has absolutely no reaction. All he says is that must be some plane. He doesn't, right. he doesn't say like, wow, you must be important. He doesn't ask her questions like, who are right. you? And why do you have your own plane with private quarters? Right. That, that would have been my first question. Right. I would have been like, private quarters? Like, how big is this thing? I know. I know. He, he doesn't ask her anything. Um, let's see. Oh, then she then she tells him she was in New York City giving a speech for, for one of her family's causes. So there's more clues coming out here and still no reaction from Sam. Again, he doesn't ask, like, who are you? You give speeches? You have your own plane? What's going on here? Right. Right. <laughs> exactly. Like, does your family have a big business? You, like, what? What do you guys do here? Yeah. I mean, my first thought was, if I was Sam, like, okay, first of all, who do I have in my home right now? <laughs> I know. Who is she related to? Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. She must be important from an important family or something. Right. Oh, this scene kills me. Okay, then he offers her dinner. He says they have leftover pizza. He says, I've never had that. Sam says, You never have, you've never had leftover, or you've never had pizza? And she right. Says, I've never had leftover pizza. Hey, girl, pizza is pizza. It doesn't matter whether it's fresh or leftover, it still tastes the same. No, that scene right there was one of my favorite scenes because when Trevor opens the refrigerator and he goes, You've never had pizza? Like, <laughs> okay, now my mind is like really going. Like but, the look on his face was priceless because he's I just know. like, and and honestly, for me, it was a little bit funny because from what I understand following Trevor, pizza is one of his favorite things. So oh, when he said that line, it was like really like it hit home with me because I'm like, oh my gosh, I can imagine. He's like, that's why it looks so authentic to me because he likes pizza and he'd say, you never had pizza. I know. So then she comes back with, I've had pizza, but I've never had leftover pizza. Right, right. Or cold pizza. I think it was like cold what? pizza. Is and it? I'm like, oh, pizza is pizza, like you say. I know, I know. That's I know. like its own food group, I think. You know, I, know, I, I, I know. truly believe that. But then the funny part even gets funnier. He pulls two plates out of the refrigerator and there is already a slice of pizza on each plate. Right. Now, hold on. Cricket, when you put leftover pizza right. in the fridge... You pull each slice apart and put each slice no, on a separate plate, no, wrap the plate, and, wrap and put too. the plates in the refrigerator. Who does no, that? 
Good no, no, you please. take the leftover pieces, you put them back in the box it came in, and you put the whole box in the refrigerator. That's what you do. Uh, um, yeah, either that, either that, either that, or you take the slices out of the box when they're all still stuck together, yes. and you wrap them in saran wrap or aluminum. Yes, or you can do that, that too. If, if you don't have enough room in your fridge, that's when you got to transport it over to the plate, and then you put the <laughs> saran wrap on it, and then it fits nicely. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know that I just started laughing when I saw that when he pulled that those plates out. Right. Oh yeah, with the slices already on them. So I was laughing so hard that I couldn't even concentrate on the rest of this scene. But anyway, <laughs> but then but then he makes her eat the eats it cold. He doesn't even bother to warm it up for her. Right. <laughs> That's true. Like, and I don't know. Like, I've had cold pizza before, but I would prefer to like throw it in the microwave at least oh, for yeah. a minute. You know. Oh yeah, I know, I know. But then you know it gets kind of nasty, so you may want to. You know, it depends. Yeah, it gets all rubbery when you put it in the microwave. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, you got to heat it up in the oven. So finally, he asks her where she is from. Not who she is, but where she is from. Uh, she says the country Volin in Eastern Europe, and still nothing from him. No more questions. <laughs> right, like like it's a common name, like. <laughs> Everybody knows where Volin is and you know Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like like she said she was from Chicago or something. Right. Now if she said that, you were exactly like I was like, oh, she's from Volin. Yeah. 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 And that it's funny you say that because in the movie I'm like, oh, well, he didn't ask her anything. Oh, she's from Volin. So I guess I should know that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, what's next? Okay, next morning, Sophie wakes up Amelia while she's asleep. Amelia asks Annie if the airport is open. She says the phone lines are down. They have breakfast, and Amelia says when her people find out that um, she isn't on her plane, there is going to be a state of emergency. And still no one asks who she is. <laughs> <laughs> Sam says the storm is a state of emergency, and he's going to leave. Right. He's going, he's going over to their other house, house to work. Now, wait a minute. It's a state of emergency. The phone lines are down. Cell towers are down. Only emergency vehicles are allowed on the roads. But he's going to drive across town to work on this house that is being remodeled. Well, uh, his yeah. house, though, isn't that far away. Yeah, yeah. Then we find out later. We find out later. Right but now, in, the, in the back of your mind, though, yeah. You're yeah, like, right now I'm thinking... Yeah. yeah. He, he's going to risk his life and drive in a state of emergency just to remodel this house. Right. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, so how much snow did they actually get? Like, I want to yeah. know the snow totals right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. And we also find out later that this house has been sitting for two years empty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, right. uh, yeah, and during a state of emergency, they do tell you that only emergency vehicles are allowed. Yes, that is true. I know, I know. So this guy's gonna risk his life, break the law just to work on this house. I know that 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 was that was wild. After breakfast, Amelia or Annie apologizes to me to Amelia about Sam's behavior. Now, what do you know what she's apologizing for? Because I didn't know what she was apologizing for. I don't um, remember. I think Sam. he was a little bit short in the kitchen and just like when he said the state of emergency, the state of emergency, if the state is an emergency, like oh. it was almost like he was just kind of, how do I explain it? He, he was just kind of being short and not really being a concerned Oh, I that kind you. of thing. I think that's what she was talking about there. I got you. Because he was just—he had a plan, and he was just leaving. He had to go do the house, you know. I got you. Yeah, I couldn't no. figure it out. The, the only the only inappropriate thing I saw was him pulling two slices of pizza out of the fridge already on a plate, <laughs> uh, and breaking the law by driving during the state of emergency. <laughs> Those right. Things had nothing right. to do with Amelia. Exactly. But then I thought, well, maybe maybe he's a, maybe she's apologizing because. Um, he made Amelia eat cold pizza. Right. Yeah, that could be true too. Like, he, I'm so sorry he's inconsiderate. He did not eat that pizza for you. <laughs> uh, then we find out that Sophie's mom uh, was named Kara, which I believe was, wasn't that the Supergirl's name in, in the Superman cartoons? I think it was. Oh, you're asking the wrong person there. <laughs> I think it was. Anyway, <laughs> 
She All I know is Lois Lane. That's it. Yeah, Lois Lane. Anyway, Kara, Sylvie's mother, was killed in a car accident. Whoa, car accident. Red flag. Now, this makes Sam driving during a state of emergency <laughs> even more ridiculous. His poor daughter lost her mother in a car accident, and now he's going to risk his life and drive during a state of emergency in order to work on this house to do the renovations. And I'm thinking, Sam, what are you doing? What are you putting your daughter through? Come on. Right. She well, but you got to remember, we find out why he's doing that. Uh, so then you got to remember, he's got in the back of his head, he's doing something for his daughter. So That's true. That's true. Yeah. But I'm thinking at this point, what are you doing? You're going to, you're going to, she already lost one parent in a car accident. Right. You why would you risk lose it? another one or what? Yeah. Right. Why would yeah. you risk it? Yep. I know. Was that what you thought? Yeah, I mean, because I didn't know how far the house was, and I did think uh -huh. that, because I'm thinking, okay, well, do you have, like, a tractor plow or something that you're going to be driving <laughs> through the state of emergency I to know. get to this other house? Like, I, I, I wanted to see the vehicle, and, and then when we saw the truck, I think he pulled up in or whatever, I was like, oh, okay, well, there's not that much snow, so I guess it's not as bad as they said it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, we then find out that Sam and Sophie moved out of their house when Carr was killed, and they were in the process of remodeling the house, and the remodeling uh, was nearly finished, and Sam hasn't done anything to the house for two years. All right, so he hasn't done anything for two years, and he decides, during a state of emergency, I'm going to start now. <laughs> what, why not? You know, why, why not? not? <laughs> hey, there's never enough time in anybody's day to really do what they need to do. So maybe he just thought it's the holidays. Why not? I, you know, I can't wait two days for the roads to get clear. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was on a time crunch, remember? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so at this point, we don't know why they moved out. Um, but I guess we do find out later. Yes. So Amelia thanks Annie for her kindness and hospitality. And Annie says, hey, it's Christmas. If it weren't for the kindness and hospitality of an innkeeper, the Christmas story would have never occurred. And she points to a manger scene. And yeah, I like this scene and I like this line. I thought that was really good. Yes, I did too. Yeah. It kind of put perspective on her situation, you know, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. you know, they welcomed, they were welcomed in the end during the holiday and she yeah. welcomed her to her home. So yeah, I yeah. did like that scene too. And I also like it when movies incorporate the story of Jesus yes. into the Christmas movies. Yes. So I thought that was really good. This movie yes. got, got a lot of pluses for me on, on, on this scene alone right here. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Let's see. Sophie asks Amelia if she wants to go outside and make a snowman. <laughs> Amelia says she can't because protocol is very strict about going out in public places. <laughs> Where was like, the protocol when she left the plane? <laughs> I know. And like father, like daughter, Sophie doesn't ask any questions. Even after right? that wacky response, nothing. <laughs> like, what What does protocol mean? I know. Like, <laughs> I know. But, but she did say majestic earlier in the movie, so maybe she did know that. Yeah, <laughs> maybe she does know what the word <laughs> protocol means. <laughs> uh, uh, then Amelia says she rarely gets to do as she pleases because her father is very strict. Again, no questions. Right. <laughs> Amelia tells Sophie that she will stay inside and watch her build the snowman. But fin finally, Amelia gives in and says, okay, I'll go outside with you. So right there when that scene happened, the first yeah. thing I thought of was the movie Frozen. Do you want to build a snowman? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of that. That was the first thing that went through my head. I'm like, oh, there's a Frozen reference. I love it. Oh, my it. gosh. <laughs> they should have got the copyrights for that music and played it in the background. Right? That would have been <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's funny. Uh -huh. uh, she tells Sophie she has nothing to wear. And Sophie says, no problem. There are tons of clothes up in the attic. And I'm thinking, uh-oh. Uh, I sense trouble here. Those clothes in the attic belong to Sophie's mother. Is she going right. to go like put them on and make people mad that she's wearing Sophie's Somebody mother's else's clothes? clothes? Right. Yeah. I, I love this scene right here. This I scene, so. I think they did so well with the lighting and 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 oh, showing. Yeah. You know. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The photography there is pretty neat. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. So I'm thinking, is Sam going to see her wearing his like deceased wife's clothes? You know. Uh oh. 
Right. My thought when I when they got up right. there and they were trying on the clothes and that, I wasn't quite sure where they were going with it. And then when they mm -hmm. went the direction of, you know, her talking about her mother and different mm -hmm. things like that, I was like, oh, okay. So that's mm -hmm. when I kind of got the idea that they were going to be seeing some of her old things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I think, didn't they find some photographs and things? Um, I don't know if there's yeah. photographs in that scene. I know that they found the the grandmother's clothes. Yeah, but that's yeah, when yeah. she got in the one uh, chest, uh, the chest or whatever, like the hope chest. Yeah, and that's yeah. where she saw um, her mom's coat. Yeah, that, that that's my next to, screenshot uh, here. Um, yes. They find the dress that Annie wore when she was a dancer. And Amelia convinces Sophie to put it on. And then Amelia teaches Sophie how to curtsy. Right. I thought that would have been a perfect time to tell her that she was a princess. I know. Exactly. Because I'm like, that's your open right there. And then she uh -huh. would have understood. She probably would have kept the secret, everything, you know. I know. Mm -hmm. I know. Exactly. That was, yeah, that, that was a perfect time. You're right. Because mm -hmm. Sophie could have said, how do you know how to curtsy? You know, or Right. Like, like, how do you know so much about all this? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Let's see. Okay. So they go outside and they build the snowman. Sam comes home and they pummel him with snowballs. <laughs> oh, and when she, he gets a strange look on his face mm -hmm. when she sees, when, when he sees her wearing his wife's coat there. Yes. And he tells her later, you know, I got that strange look on my face because I thought that you were like my wife, you know. Right. Yeah. Um, so anyway, he, he joins in on the snowball fight. I know. I like this scene too. Now they put that in there where they like touched hands or whatever, making yeah. the snowman go around. So Amelia, I thought that was yeah. really cute. Yeah, yeah, Amelia puts a hat on the snowman. Sam takes his scarf off, scarf off, and helps Amelia uh, wrap the scarf around the snowman. And then Sam and Amelia touch hands, and they give each other this, you know, this little ro 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 romantic look. Well, the one thing there too on that scene was, I'm like, what? man, if they built that snowman. They they would look pretty rough when Sam got home because <laughs> it is not easy to build a snowman of that size, you know, to look that perfect. Uh -huh. But I know, like, when I play with my daughter outside, my, my face is beat red when I'm out there all day building. So I thought that was kind of funny in that scene. Like, they just looked like they walked outside and, oh, the snowman was already there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But it was a cute scene. I really did like that scene. And also, I thought, I want is that the same snowman? That they used in the movie Royally Wrapped for Christmas. Did you see the movie with Jen? Lee? I did. Yes. They had a snowman in that one. That they, yes. That they, that they dressed. Yeah. I thought. I wonder if that's the same snowman. You know what? And I've seen that in a couple of movies, different movies, where you see some of the same props, and you're like, wait. And and there was a few from uh, some of the other movies. Um, the one uh, Mustang. There's a Mustang that was in both movies that I saw. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know yeah. what you mean. I know what you so, mean. But yeah, that's too funny, though. Yeah. <laughs> so they go inside for dinner and some Christmas uh, cookie baking. Amelia picks up the phone to see if the phone is working, but it still isn't. Then she helps Sam dry some dishes. She tells him her father is controlling. She has no freedom. Her life is very scheduled. And she would like <laughs> to be ordinary and still no questions from him. <laughs> Crickets. I'm not referring to you. I'm, re I'm referring to silence. <laughs> right, right. No, mom's the word. I mean, and, and I think it, I was thinking about all these scenes and why maybe he wouldn't ask, you know, and I'm like, because to me, I, I would have to know, like, I I'd know. have to know, like, who are you? Like, what are you doing here all by yourself? You have uh -huh. no family here. Nobody like. Did they just drop you out of the sky? Like, literally? Like, where did mm -hmm. you come from? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and then I thought, well, maybe, you know, maybe he just doesn't want to pry into her life because she is very guarded, I think, with some of her, you know, discussions with him and, and the family. So I thought, well, maybe that's why he's not asking. But again, I, I would have already asked 50 million questions. I know. I know. Uh, I think this is the point when we find out that Sam and Sophie have been living at Annie's for two years. I think he tells uh, Amelia that. And so I'm thinking, what's he been doing for two years? He hasn't done anything to this house. I guess he's been right. uh, too depressed to work on it, apparently. Right, right. Um, he just needed somebody to to give him a little push of, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, then he says it is time to get back to it. Even though the remodeling is not done, it's time to move back into the house, he says. 
Next morning, Sophie and Amelia <laughs> see that Sam brought the tree in from the garage, but it's crooked. So Sophie puts a magazine under the stand to straighten it up. And he tells them the phone lines are still down. She also tells Amelia that the airport got word to her plane that she wasn't on it. Apparently, the airport has the royal family's phone number, and they never realized that she wasn't on the plane. <laughs> yeah, I never understood that. There was a scene in there, too, when they're talking about all the cell towers are down and all this, and I'm thinking, somebody's got to have a cell phone that works. I mean, in this day and age, like, I could see back in the 19, you know, 70s, late 70s 80s or whenever the first the cell phones came out but i'm thinking mm -hmm. this is you know modern age now they they should add some ability yeah if the phone lines are still down the radio tower is still down how did they get word to her to the royal family you know right um but i, I yeah I, maybe I, they I, did I, sos i don't know <laughs> i don't know <laughs> amelia says that's Force great code. Yeah, i know <laughs> amelia says that's great but andy says the airport is still closed then Annie asks, who wants Christmas pancakes? Sophie asks, with sprinkles? And Annie says, of course. Now, what are Christmas pancakes? you have any idea? Um, well, I don't know. I think each family has their own tradition of things. And I'll be honest, I do um, eggnog French toast for Christmas morning. That's my thing. Oh, cool. Yes. You get the, the big Texas toast bread and you uh -huh. do um eggnog uh and then some cinnamon and sugar and all of that and you, you do eggnog french toast that's my thing so you make it with eggnog instead of milk yes yes oh my gosh and it's so good like you smell the nutmeg you smell uh -huh. the eggnog and it's just and then you have to like you know it's it's not really that good for you i'm not <laughs> no, obviously um it's not good at all but you know uh -huh. on christmas morning it's like that's a day where you don't care you want to eat good food you know for the holidays mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so what i do then i sprinkle powdered sugar on it and then i put a wallop of whipped cream out of the can and it's ready to go oh that is very <laughs> awesome <laughs> so yeah it's probably a family tradition that they have uh, every christmas so yeah uh eggnog eggnog french toast. that sounds really good yes Annie begins making pancakes and asks Amelia to grab her a nutmeg seed. And Amelia looks around but has no idea what a nutmeg seed looks like. And you know what? I don't think I would either. I'm not sure. Um, I, <laughs> in that scene, I'm like, nutmeg seed? What is that? Like, know. you know, we are so used to just going to the grocery store and getting nutmeg. I mean, yeah, I would not know what a nutmeg seed yeah, looks like. The nutmeg that's in a powder. It looks yes, like brown you powder. spring. It's already, yeah. you know, ground up. Like, yeah, so I yeah. thought that scene was a little messed up on uh, their <laughs> part for her not knowing because I wouldn't have known either. Uh, Amelia tells Annie uh, she hasn't seen too many kitchens. Uh, so Annie asks if she wants a cooking lesson. So Annie tells Amelia to add milk to this mixing bowl and whisk it around. And that's your lesson. <laughs> <laughs> well, my thing is, first of all, if you're cooking for a big family, that little bag of pancake mix is not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not gonna work. That bag was so small, and there was like very little like uh, material coming out of it. And I'm like, what kind of pancakes are they making? The silver dollar kind, or what? That's, you know, that's like true, that's true. <laughs> uh, Sophie says she wants to trim the tree with their old ornaments, particularly the homemade ones uh, with her mom's picture. Annie says they can't get them because Sam has the truck. Uh, plus, there's a state of emergency. You, really, you, you left that part out, Annie. Um, Amelia says, Amelia then <laughs> says, she will walk to the house and get the ornaments. And Annie says, it will be tough walking in all that snow. Sophie says, I'll go with you. And Annie says, no way, the snow is up to your waist. Right. Annie, Annie also says that the house is only a few streets away. Uh, well, if the house is in walking distance, why did Sam take the truck? Why didn't he just walk? Right. <laughs> Instead of driving during a state of emergency. <laughs> right. Maybe he had a snowmobile we didn't know about. Like, maybe that was in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, apparently the snow is up to Sophie's waist. So it's going to be tough to walk in. All right. <laughs> now we see the next... Now we see an overhead shot of the town. Yes. It doesn't look like to me. You can see the street. Yeah. No, 
It's not that bad. Well, look at the streets. They look perfectly clear to me. They do. Yeah. You can see the road on them even. So yeah, no. The road. Yeah. But apparently it's up to Sophie's waist. Okay. So yeah, the roads look clear, but there's a state of emergency. The electricity is out. <laughs> Uh, we see Amelia walking up to the house. Right. Where'd all the snow go? Ah, yes. <laughs> Annie told Sophie the snow is waist high, but Amelia's walking through the snow. No problem. <laughs> right. I'm like, well, then my thought was, well, maybe she gave her snow boots from the attic too. But then I'm like, okay, the snow boots. I don't even know if she's got snow boots on right there. She looks like I she's think, got regular black boots on. So I'm yeah, thinking. She's got boots on, but I mean, they're not even covered. The snow's not even covering her ankles. No. Sam what? must have shoveled it when he over say that, that Maybe Sam shoveled the side. The, exactly. The side or something. I don't know. That's right. Yep. <laughs> and he plowed the streets while he was at it, too. Right. I want to know when they decorated the house that they hadn't been working oh, on. Oh, that's the next. That's, that's, <laughs> my, no, that's my next question coming up. Yeah. <laughs> well, she gets inside the house without a key. Apparently, they just leave their door unlocked so anyone <laughs> can walk right in. <laughs> Uh, then someone walks in behind her and introduces herself as the next door neighbor. And after she introduces herself, she just leaves all of a sudden. She just says, hi, I'm the neighbor. Bye. <laughs> right. Well, she said she thought she was Annie. She said yeah. from the back, she looked like Annie. So uh, she thought it was Sam's yeah. mom. Yeah. But, then but yeah, realizes, why is the house open? But then she realizes she doesn't have a conversation. She just leaves. Well, and, and I came to the conclusion in that moment that maybe the town of Tucker, Maine leaves everything open because, you know, they didn't need security. They <laughs> yeah. didn't shut the airplane door. You know, that's so right. that's just how it is there, Chad. That's just how and it is. And, and people <laughs> take strangers home. You know, right. It's such know, a loving know. town. I need yeah. to find this place. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, then we take a look inside this house. No one's lived there for two years, and yet there's Christmas decorations up inside it. Yep. There's, and outside. And outside. Yeah, there's garland. All around the doorways, the staircase, there's even ornaments hanging from the garland. Uh, now, what's going on here? <laughs> I mean, if you were right. going to remodel a house, wouldn't you take the Christmas decorations down first? Yeah, there wouldn't be any decorations. <laughs> However, if if they had a scene where the mom was surprising with Sophie with Sam that they were going to decorate it for her, I probably would have got that better, I think, yeah, than, yeah, than just walking yeah. in and it's already done. Yeah, walking into a house that's been empty for two years and seeing Christmas yes. decorations. So, but they were beautiful, what, though. They're beautiful. Oh, yeah. So this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking the film crew thought, let's put up some Christmas decorations in the, inside this house so the viewers don't forget yes. that it's a Christmas movie. Right. <laughs> right. Because, I mean, it's true. You mean, you you want to keep that theme going. So I understand <laughs> why they did it. But it's like, OK, he's only working on this bed. He didn't have time to decorate. <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, let's see. Amelia goes down to the basement to look for Sophie's ornaments, and Sam comes into the house. He sees the ornaments that Amelia found and thinks Sophie is in the basement. So he uh, so he tells her to come out. Yeah, he tells her, hey, yeah, come out. Oh, then we see a funny scene here. Surprise, <laughs> Amelia pops up. He asks what she's doing there, and she says she came to get Sophie's ornaments, and he says... Oh, that's why I'm here, too. Now, wait a minute. I thought he was going to the house to do work on the renovations. Now we find out he went to the house to look for Sophie's ornaments. Right, right. <laughs> like, what happened there? Yeah, Where's the and what, yeah. And yeah. my other thing is, is what is on her head? Is that a wreath? Or yeah, is that a yeah. hoodie? Like, what is that? I know. What is that? Is it a I, wreath? I've never wreath seen a Christmas tinsel? decoration like that. Tinsel or something? I don't know. I don't know. That's a wide or, tinsel. That's or all like I gotta say. White garland or something, maybe. <laughs> I don't know, but I was and like, also, "Where did they find that?" <laughs> I know. And also, wouldn't he have already been at the house when Amelia got there because he left before she did? Yes. To go to the house. <laughs> that is true. He did. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he yeah. went and got lunch or something. Yeah. <laughs> no, he or had to go he, into town because you know. Or, or maybe he went. Or maybe he went and got a shovel so he could shovel the sidewalk. Maybe, yeah. Maybe he was around the back of the house still shoveling. I mean, that, that's a, yeah. <laughs> oh, they go upstairs and Sam says, it's a good thing you didn't bring Sophie. He says, I wouldn't want her to see the house like this. You know, all, all decorated for, for Christmas, you know. Right. <laughs> yeah. 
apparently he hasn't been working on the renovations like Sophie thinks he has. Uh, he's been procrastinating on them because I guess, like I said before, he's too yeah. sad to move back into the house. Right. He tells Amelia that he will keep her secret if she keeps his. And she's like, what? What's my secret? That's what I was thinking, too. What's her secret? And he says, the fact that you look bad in tinsel. <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, I know. I really hey. thought for a moment that he found out. You know, yeah, I really but, thought he found out. And I'm like, oh, he found I out. Know. But then when he said that, you know, it was like, oh. I know, but, but I hate to break it to you, big guy. Someone looking <laughs> bad in tinsel is not a secret. <laughs> that's, that's just an observation. No one is going right? to care if that gets out. <laughs> exactly. You shouldn't have been around the tinsel if you didn't want somebody to find out. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and I guess his secret he was referring to was the fact that he hasn't been working on the house. Right. They go back to Annie's house and give Sophie the ornaments that they found, and they begin decorating the tree. They talk about the tradition they have of making a new ornament every year and then ask Amelia about her family traditions. She says her traditions are very formal, like waiting until after Christmas dinner before opening their gifts. And Sophie, like she freaks out. She says, I she can't believe that Amelia has to wait all day on Christmas before opening any gifts. Um, Amelia then says her country does have one tradition, one that involves tying a yellow ribbon around an old oak tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it did no, no. remind me of that no I it know, did remind me of that though you're right she says their tradition is tying a ribbon on the christmas tree and making a wish which is kind of a neat tradition i like that that is cool but i like the fact that it's not for yourself it's for somebody else yeah yeah, That's yeah what I the like. wish is for someone else yeah, yeah. yes but i wonder later, too i'll, I'll yeah. say this later but i wonder yeah. later like if you wish it for somebody else, how do you know if it ever came true if you didn't follow them or know oh, who they that's are? Right. That's right. That's a good point. How do you know if it came true or not? Yeah. No, you don't. You don't. Hopefully. Yeah. yeah. Later, Amelia tells Sam that this is the first Christmas tree she has ever decorated because her staff dec decorates the tree. And still, he doesn't ask any questions. No questions. <laughs> She has, a, she has a staff that decorates a tree for her. Mm -hmm. I love this scene right here because the lighting and the colors yeah. of all the decorations, I just, that scene was so like, it was romantic, but it was also like mm -hmm. touching. Like you just oh, felt yeah. in the moment with them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the, they did a couple of good scenes. They did really well with the lighting, the attic scene and this scene. Yes. Uh, Amelia then tells uh, Sam that she didn't have any Christmas excitement when she was Sophie's age. Sam asks if she went to school, made friends, dated. Amelia says she was homeschooled so she couldn't make friends and she has never been on a date. She says she has danced with men at social gatherings but under the scrutiny of her father. And still, no, no questions, questions from Sam like, who are you? No right. questions whatsoever. Like seriously like she can't do nothing like i would be like are you like in the are you in the monastery or something or like no. are you a nun i know exactly. <laughs> no friends never been on a date right are yeah. you like the you know like what they say like um like an angel, like basically, like that's yeah. what I, that's where I yeah. kind of was thinking maybe that's where they were trying to portray her as is an angel because she uh -huh. she wasn't like a normal person, you know what I mean? And and this was his angel coming to kind of save him in a sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She he does ask if she could leave her father's scrutiny, if she could leave, if she would. Mm -hmm. She says her home means everything to her. She needs to find her own happiness in it. And still, no, no more questions from Sam. No questions, yeah. Yeah, I don't think Sam would be a good lawyer. Right. <laughs> he doesn't ask any questions. <laughs> no, he does not ask any questions. I mean, he did ask a few, but they weren't related to, like, who she was. Like, I know, I know. You know, and, and maybe it's because he had this um, idea in his head that he, you know, didn't want to start a relationship or even be interested in anybody because of his, you know, the past two years of not having his wife. So uh -huh. I kind of took it, but then there was moments where he looked interested in her and really wanted to, you know, maybe start something with her. So yeah, mm -hmm. that was a, that was, that was tough when he didn't ask questions. I know he wouldn't make a good attorney and he wouldn't make a good policeman. 
<laughs> Forget being. He would have done taking his butt out. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> Let's see what's next. Oh, I had to include this. Oh a, yes. This slide yes. here. Next morning, Amelia puts on jeans for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> and then she tries the phone to see if it works and it does work and i had to include this shot just for you because i know you 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 enjoyed this pink phone i so did <laughs> i so did and my quote i even quoted this on twitter i'm like look marcel they have a 1980s pink phone <laughs> a touch one <laughs> yeah. yeah that yeah i know i i love this this retro phone here yes yeah. i do too uh, she then calls her country, and I can't imagine what that long distance call costs. Right. Doesn't bother to ask Annie first if she can call Europe. She's just going <laughs> to boost this month's phone bill for her. Right. She'll just take care of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> she tells her staff she is fine. Asks how her father is uh, taking her disappearance. She told he is not happy and that the Royal Jet will be coming back to pick her up as soon as the airports in Maine open back up. And they tell her soon her time stuck in that little town will be a memory and she doesn't like to hear that because she she kind of likes this this little town yeah she's starting to get really good feelings about the town about sam about sophie yes 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 yes, yes. she goes downstairs and doesn't tell annie that she just put a 50 dollar <laughs> long distance call on her phone bill ah. so, so. He was probably like a hundred. It probably wasn't. Even 50. I know, probably hundred. Yeah. Uh, Sophie says that she is making a gift for her dad. Amelia asks where Sam is, and Annie says he went back to the house. Sophie asks Annie if they can go to the town's Christmas Eve party this year. Annie says, "Oh, your dad probably won't want to." Sophie then says, uh, "Why don't we surprise him and we get all dressed up and go?" Oh, wait a minute. Okay, you can get dressed up and go, but how are you going to get Sam there? Are you going to lock him in the trunk? Right. I'm thinking, I'm thinking that, which that, that sounds like another Lifetime movie again. Right. It always <laughs> goes back to the Lifetime movie. I know. <laughs> <laughs> right. I was like, how is she going to convince him to go? Yeah. Like, so, yeah. So, Amelia is going to have to put on a pretty dress and, you know, be all beautiful and say, come on, Sam, you need to come. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, they will have to put him in the trunk. Yeah, and show a little leg or something. Right. <laughs> next I don't week, know about all that. <laughs> next, <laughs> next we see Sam and his neighbor working on the house. His neighbor asks him how he likes Amelia, and he says, hey, come down there, matchmaker. She lives in Europe, and she is only here for a limited time. Yeah. Uh, only going to be there for two days. Annie, Sophie, and Amelia go shopping. And man, there are a lot of people there. Yeah. The just opened that morning. And how did all these people get there? After the state of emergency. Because <laughs> when there's a state of emergency and we get tons of snow, it takes me two days to shovel out. Right. <laughs> but every one shovels in like 15 minutes and they're shopping. And they're shopping. <laughs> they got cabin fever. They're out of there. I know. I know. <laughs> uh, Let's see. Sophie and Amelia go off to buy a gift for Sam. And even though Sophie, didn't Sophie already say she was making him a gift or something? I don't know. Um, They're going to go buy another gift for him. Yeah, I thought she did. I don't know. I yeah, did. I thought she was. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Amelia takes a seat in uh, Fred Claus's chair. Fred Claus comes up and tells her she looks at home sitting in that fancy chair and asks her if she is a queen. <laughs> if he only knew. Right. <laughs> then he gives her public speaking tips. <laughs> right, right, wait, wait. <laughs> I know. Amelia goes to Sam's house and brings him lunch. He shows her the surprise for Sophie that he's been working on for two years. It is a horsey headboard, and he engraved her name on it. Amelia says, let me help you with the house. She says she can paint. And Sam asks her if she has ever painted before. And she says she took lessons from a great artist in Europe. He then asks, have you ever used a roller? And she <laughs> says, roller, brush. Well, what's the difference? 
<laughs> right. Well, he also uh, says that he didn't well, want her to get her pretty little hands dirty. And I was thinking to myself, if mm -hmm. I was her, I would have been like, what do you mean by that? Like, I'm a strong, independent woman. I can get my hands dirty. And then he's like, no, that's not what I meant. That's right. That's yeah. right. I accept rides from strangers. I'm a strong woman. Right. I'm a strong, independent woman. That's why she didn't have security, Chad. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. How come she knows Taekwondo? Yeah, now that I think about it, how come security didn't escort her off the plane at the beginning of the movie when she heard those jingle bells and went out? Why didn't right. like, security go why with didn't her? They even let her go? And yeah. if you notice that one scene, there was no other planes, there was no cars, there was nothing. Yeah. So how were they getting back to the airport? <laughs> I know, I know. I just had to throw that in there. I know. <laughs> But okay. no, that woodworking is good. Okay. Yeah, though, yeah, the woodworking? Yes. It's oh, beautiful. Yeah. oh, yeah, it is. Yep. Then we have the romantic made for TV moment scene where you have paint on your face. And here, let me wipe it off for you. Of course, it's either the paint or the little bit of mayonnaise or mustard. Yeah. Go yeah. Some and type of food. Off. Yeah. Yes. Paint. Yeah. 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 A little like hot chocolate or something. Right. right. A marshmallow stuck to your nose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So Sam wipes the green paint off Amelia's face because, you know, it ain't easy being green. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi-ho, come with the frog here. Right. Uh, he, says, he says Sophie will love these colors. Too bad you won't be here to see her reaction. Amelia says, I wish I could be, but my assistant uh, uh, at, or says, as soon as the airport opens up, I'm out of here. Sam says, assistant? And still no questions. Still like, no questions. Who are you? Right. <laughs> Sam says, you must be excited to get home. And Amelia says, eh, not so much. She says she's not looking forward to dealing with her father's wrath. And she loves her time that she has spent with Sam, Sophie, and Annie. Anything to add there? Um, well, I was just looking at that scene because I remember, is this the kissing yeah. scene, right? Or do you have a slide for that kissing well, scene? Well, let's see. Let's see what comes up next. No, that's later. Okay. That's later. Is it later? I thought that yeah, was the later. scene. Okay. No, it's later. It's later. Okay, okay, never mind. So, I'll be quiet then. Oh, well, that's okay. So they go <laughs> outside to check on Sophie, who was brushing a horse. Um, or they went somewhere. Oh, they went to the neighbor's house, I guess. Yeah, because the horse is over by the, the neighbor's house. Uh, Amelia tells Mrs. Kravitz, the nosy neighbor, that uh, she's afraid she won't make it home for Christmas. The neighbor says, well, you can come to our town's Christmas Eve party with us. Amelia says, ah, Sam won't go. Well, you know, who cares if Sam won't go? She can go with him. Right. Right. <laughs> well. the, the, the neighbor says, I have an idea. Let me talk with my hubby. <laughs> I wonder what this idea is. Right. Oh, they're going to have an idea to trick Sam to go to this, this party. Mm -hmm. So I love the shots of the horses here. And yes. This, this barn they have set up. It's yeah, that's a phenomenal like stable barn or whatever that is. Yeah, th yeah, this is one of my favorite scenes here. Mm -hmm. Sophie asks Amelia if she likes horses, and Amelia says she used to jump horses competitively. Sophie says that is so cool. Can she, you show me how to jump? Amelia says she'll do a demonstration for them. Then we see Amelia on a horse doing some jumping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know. Not I was all. surprised by this scene. Not not surprised because being royalty, you're supposed to know how to ride a horse. But yeah, oh, yeah. that would have uh, also raised questions right there. What? Like, who is she? How does she know how to ride? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And also, I wonder if that's Merritt on the horse or a stunt double. Probably a stunt double. Oh, you think so? I don't know. Hmm. We'll have to find that out, Chad. Yeah. <laughs> So Sam watches her jump and says, wow, that was impressive. And Amelia says, what, do you think I just sat around at, on fancy jets and at tea parties all day long? Uh, they go back to Annie's house. And Amelia stands outside and looks at the Christmas lights on the house. I guess she, she likes uh, Christmas lights. They turn around and they see Fred Claus's dog Storm. That's the cutest dog, you know that? That is the cutest dog. I know, I know. He was so well behaved too. Like he just, you know, uh, he's awesome. Yeah. Uh, she tells Sam that Storm is the reason they met and how she got off her plane to follow him and wound up at Annie's house. Sam says, well, 
we can't take him home because they closed the roads to Fred's house in case it snowed some more. Huh? Now, wait a minute. How, for, how does he know they closed the roads to Fred's house? He doesn't live anywhere near Fred. And also, <laughs> besides, Fred lives at the North Pole because he's Santa. And anyway, right. <laughs> wait, I thought the roads were open because they were shopping earlier. They were shopping. So how'd they get closed again? How'd they, how'd, yeah, how'd the roads get closed again? Right. Yeah, I know. There's some holes in those stories for sure. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. Definitely. I know. I know. And, and another thing, they don't close roads before a storm. Um, they close, and you, you know, thinking that a storm might occur, they close the roads right. after the storm happens, you know, when there's too yes. much snow on the road and they can't drive on them. You know, that's what I, But anyway, they opened the roads earlier, so he can take this 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 dog back. <laughs> right. If nothing yeah. else, take him to the tree farm. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Exactly. Amelia says, why don't you bring him in? Sophie would love it. They take Storm inside. Sophie is all excited and wants to keep him. Uh, for some reason, Annie thinks the dog needs a bath. Uh, so they tell, so she tells Sam and Amelia to give him a bath. <laughs> Sam asks if Amelia has a dog. She says no. She always wanted one. Her father wouldn't allow it because they have to, or no, her says her, her, says her fa father wouldn't allow it. But they do have two cats. Sam says her cats probably have jeweled collars and then asks her about her heart of the ocean necklace that she's wearing around her neck. <laughs> she says it belonged to her mother. Uh, and we never know what happened to her mother. They never said. Yeah. Um, I guess her mother must have passed away, apparently. Amelia says Sam is overprotective of Sophie, just like her father. He doesn't, he doesn't really have a reaction to that, I don't think. No, I don't uh, think either. Yeah. Storm jumps out of the bucket. They're trying to bathe him in. Gets suds all over Annie's house. Um, then they have an interrupted kiss by Annie, who's yelling about the dog and all the suds all over their house or her house. Oh, yeah. The interrupted kiss. They like oh, to yeah. do that a lot. Yeah, we have to have the interrupted kiss. Absolutely. Kissing. Annie tells Amelia the airport will open tomorrow. Not exactly sure what day it is. If it's the 22nd, 23rd, or 24th. I think it must be the 23rd or 24th. I don't know. Um, Sophie wants Amelia to stay for the Christmas party. She says she wishes she could, uh, but she's got to get, or no, she says she wishes she could, oh, but she's got to get back to business, right? Yeah, that's right. Then Amelia tells Sophie that she spoke with Mrs. Kravitz, the nosy neighbor, and they have a plan to trick Sam into attending the Christmas party. What are they up to? I don't know. Right. I was trying to figure out what they're going to say to him to get him yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Um, Sophie and Amelia, or Sophie and Annie tell Amelia how much they will miss her when she hits the road. Annie tells Amelia she talked to her staff and they are eager to get her home and that they referred to her as Princess Amelia. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Cat's out of the bag. Yep, Annie knows now that she is a princess. Next morning, Amelia and Sophie are drawing Santa and a horse. Sophie says uh, she gets her drawing skills from her father. Amelia goes upstairs to get the supplies uh, she bought to make frames uh, for these pictures that they are drawing. I guess that's why they were shopping. Sam catches her getting the stuff and wants to see it. Amelia won't let him. Sophie says, you can't see it. It's for Christmas. Sam tells Sophie her grandmother needs her downstairs to make uh, gingerbread cake. I've never heard of gingerbread cake. Have you? No, I have not. Yeah, that's a new one. That must be another one of their Christmas traditions. It must be, yeah. <laughs> they go in the kitchen to make these gingerbread cakes. Sam tells the, or Sam says the weather has improved and he's going to make, or he's going to take Storm home. Sophie gets all upset and begins begging Sam to keep him. So Sam makes a deal with her and says that maybe after we move back into our house, you can get a dog. Sam tells Amelia, it looks like the airport is going to open today and you will be able to leave. Sam tells her to come over to the house uh, before she leaves so that she can say goodbye. Then Amelia has a, as her Annie has a talk with Amelia. She says 
that she needs to tell Sam who she is. She says she can't. I don't know. Why can't she? Right. Why can't <laughs> I she? Know. I know at this point, why can't you? Anyway, Annie says someone has to tell him because he will feel betrayed if he finds out that Annie knew and didn't tell him. Mm. Annie says, if you don't tell him, I will. Lifetime movie. <laughs> <laughs> Amelia goes to the town hall to help Mrs. Kravitz. The nosy neighbor gets a call from her hubby, and apparently their plan to get Sam to go to this Christmas Eve party has fallen through. And we never get to find out what the plan was. Right. I wanted to know. Like, I what? know. I wanted to know, too. <laughs> the nosy neighbor says to Amelia, why don't you go? Why don't you get Sam to come? Amelia says, oh, I can't. He won't listen to me. And the nosy neighbor says, oh, yes, he will. <laughs> so she goes over to the house to convince Sam to go to this Christmas Eve dance. He asks if she stopped by to say goodbye. He says, it's time for you to get back to your jets and your fancy parties. No more being ordinary here in Tucker, Maine. She says she has felt extraordinary being there. Now, here's what you're talking about. She's yeah, looking all inviting. Yeah. yeah, she's looking all inviting. She's leaning up against the wall. And he leans in for a kiss. Sure does. I love his. I love what he says. He says, "Now was that extraordinary or something?" He says along that line. I'm like, "That was so." Oh, good. does he? Yeah, Wait, I think after so. The, after the kiss? I think so. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That was that was one of my favorite scenes as well. All right. So he goes in for the kiss, and then after the kiss, he does say, "What now?" And she says, "I have to tell you something." Oh, here it is—the big moment. Dun dun dun. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to tell him she wears a crown. She begins to tell him, and then his phone rings. It's Melanie calling. Apparently, that's the nosy neighbor. Amelia says, oh, she needs my help at the town hall. And so she asks Sam for a lift. Well, wait a minute. How did, she, how did Amelia get from the town hall <laughs> to the house if she doesn't have a car? Who, who brought her? Did someone bring her? Right. Did she I rent a car? <laughs> that or the, the the town is like so very little that everybody can walk from their house you know maybe that's why there was no cars in the other parts <laughs> yeah, no. um he says i'm wearing work clothes i can't go looking like this she says well i need to go back to your mother's house to change so why don't you go with me she begs him so finally he gives in they pull up to the town hall. She says, let's go inside. And he says, no, I don't think I can. She asks why. And he tells her the story about how his wife got killed in a car accident after leaving this Christmas party or this Christmas Eve, Eve party two years ago. He says the accident was caused by black ice. Now, now here's what I need to get on my soapbox because there is no such thing as black ice because ice has no color. It is clear. <laughs> I it's mean, an expression. You've never heard that expression? It takes the color of the surface below it. I have heard this expression. It drives me <laughs> crazy. So if the surface below the ice were green, would people call it green ice? Green ice? Right. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. I mean, no. That's true. It's, it's, it's you got a good ice. point. It's That's just a good ice. Point. So if the road under the ice is black, it's still ice. It's not black ice, but I know everybody, people, everyone calls it black ice, which yes. I, I never understood that. So another thing. If, if the reason he won't go to this Christmas Eve party uh, is because, well, it's because the party reminds him of the last time he saw his wife. Right. But here, here's what I was thinking. His wife didn't die at this party. She died driving home from the party. Right. So True. he shouldn't be afraid of avoiding Christmas parties. Shouldn't he be afraid of riding in a car at night when there's ice on the road? Isn't that right. what he should be avoiding? True. But it probably it probably like stirs up the memories of, you know, when him and his wife were at that party and then they left. Because right. I don't know if the party's in the same exact place. Is that what I think they referenced? It I don't know. I don't know. Place. I don't know. So, yeah, yeah he could just yeah. be having some, you know, yeah. anxiety moments of, right. of you right. know, relapse memories. I guess so. I guess so. I guess so. But I thought it was God that she didn't die at the party. She died True. The True. Well, if nothing else, he should have walked like everybody else. <laughs> uh, so Amelia gets out and goes into the town hall without him. 
Next, we see the royal jet at the airport. The king has come back to pick up Amelia. Uh, I guess he doesn't trust the staff to do it, so uh, he's going to do it um, himself. Yeah. Uh, since they, he doesn't trust the staff since they messed up the first time, apparently. Well, they don't have staff, remember? No. <laughs> yeah, that's right. that's right. So Sam decides to go into the party. He changes his mind and walks in with Amelia. Sophie is all happy. The nosy neighbor, nosy neighbor asks Amelia if she wants to get the party started by giving a toast. She says she would love to. Sam says, wait, I thought you didn't like to do public speaking. And she says, usually she doesn't but she's not settling for her usual anymore. And I guess I thought for a minute and I thought, what does that mean? I guess that means that's a fancy way of saying she's gonna step out of her comfort zone. Right. <laughs> yeah. And do her, yep. Yeah, yeah. Amelia gets on stage, oh, I love this part. Amelia gets on stage to give this toast. She looks at Fred, Fred Claus, he puts his hand over his heart and gives her a Santa wink, telling her <laughs> to just speak from her heart. I guess is right. what the wink meant. She introduces herself to everyone because I guess they don't know who she is. It's not like this is a, is a small town where everyone knows every, everyone's business. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> no, not at it all. Is small, it is a small town. Right. She thanks everyone for their hospitality and tells them they should be grateful that they live there and what a special place this town is. She says she especially would like to thank Annie, Sam, and Sophie for taking her in. She says the kindness and generosity they have shown her reflect the spirit of Christmas. She holds up a glass, says cheers and wishes everyone a Merry Christmas. That's right. And she still didn't say who she was, did she? I think she did introduce herself. Yeah, she did. Did she say princess though? Oh, wait, no, she didn't say princess. She didn't, no, she just, she right. Said her name was Amelia. She just said yes. her name was Amelia. Okay, so she gets off the stage. Sam goes over to her and says, well, you impressed me once again. <laughs> I, know, I don't know how Trevor kept a straight face saying that line because all she did was thank people for being nice to her and then say right. Merry Christmas. That's it. Right. <laughs> that That's true. Well, know. maybe maybe he said that because he knew she was not comfortable speaking. Maybe that's why he said that. I guess so, but that little speech just blew that, his blew Well, his and off. I was expecting a little bit more of a grander speech. I'm not going to lie. Thank you. Merry Christmas. That's it. Right. Thank you for being nice to me. All right. Then Amelia uh, tries to tell, to tell Sam again who, who, uh, who she is, but then her father, the king, walks in and interrupts her. She curtsies and Sam says, hey, what are you doing? She introduces Sam to her father and she calls him king. And she said, and Sam says, what? Your father is Elvis? Right. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, he doesn't say that, but he should have. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, Sophie says to her, uh, you are a princess, a real princess. No, she's a fake princess, kid. Right. She, only real princesses are in fairy tales. All right. <laughs> Amelia apologizes to, to them for not telling them uh, who she really is or was. Uh, the Sam says, hey, we got to hit the road. Amelia be begins to leave. Sophie, Sophie stops her and says, hey, you can't leave. You're the special guest. Special guest? If she's the party's special guest, then why does she have to introduce herself to everyone? Wouldn't they right. know who she is? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I wondered that too. That was, I was like, yeah. okay, well, if they knew she was coming, why did, you know, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They should have yeah. done a little bit more of a grander entrance or something. <laughs> Sophie tells the king, or Sophie tells the king that he is also a special guest too, even though they had no idea he was coming in and crashing this party. Uh, <laughs> She asks them to stay for one dance. She grabs the king's hand. So they go cut the rug. <laughs> Amelia then apologizes to Sam. She says she tried to tell him earlier, but she was worried about getting him to this party. She begs him not to be mad. He extends his hand and asks her to dance. They begin dancing. Uh, and he says, uh, am I allowed to dance with a princess? Oh, yeah. He, he mm -hmm. asked for her for permission. She says, okay. Sam asks her if she is going to be queen one day, and she says yes. 
then he thinks and says, oh, geez, I made you wash the dog and paint Sophie's room. Right. <laughs> yeah. He thanks her for, or he, he thanks her for helping to make Sophie's Christmas special. And she thanks him for sharing their Christmas with her and for helping her find her voice. Ha, ah, now we're back to that wonderful speech that she gave where she thanked people for being nice to her and wishes everyone a Merry Christmas. Just a mind blowing speech. <laughs> Next we see Amelia and the King on their royal plane getting ready to take off and Amelia does not look happy. Her father tells her uh, they are headed to Boston for another Christmas Eve party. She is not happy about that. And the King says, I thought you would be happy to get uh, out of this Oh, or out. I thought you'd be happy to get to a bigger city after being trapped in this small town. And she says she wasn't trapped. She says it was the first time in her life that she didn't feel trapped and she experienced a freedom she has never felt before. He says, I heard your speech and whoo, it was impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's blown away by that toast. He says, You were confident and elegant, just like your mother. Uh, let's see. He says, he only wants her to be happy. She says, if that is what you want, I, I'll tell you what will make me happy. Then we see Annie, Sam, and Sophie. They're opening uh, their Christmas gifts on Christmas morning. Sam opens the gift that Sophie drew him, and it is, is a Santa in a, a horse-drawn sleigh. She tells him she drew the picture, and Amelia helped him make the frame. Uh, then he opens another gift that Amelia picked out, and it is a scarf. Oh, the doorbell rings, and guess who is there? Amelia holding another cute dog. Yes. Uh, now, my question is, where did she stay overnight? <laughs> the, the last time we saw well, her, she was on true. the royal plane on Christmas Eve with the king. So right. did they go to Boston for this Christmas Eve party and then fly back to then, Maine? Did right. She, did she sleep on the plane? Who knows? Right. Where'd they go? Did who they knows? actually even leave? I know. Who knows? And where'd uh, she get the dog around the holidays? Come on. The I know, but she's aren't here open. now <laughs> with a dog. And yeah, our, our pet store's open on Christmas Eve. Did she go to a pet store and buy this dog or what? Right. Like, where'd she get the dog from? Yeah. Are, are shelters open on Christmas Eve? Right. I, I, I don't know. I think they should be. I think that would be a phenomenal thing for them to promote, because I'm sure they probably would get rid of a lot of their dogs I know. and animals. <laughs> I know. There you go, a new thing, Chad. We just started it right here. <laughs> they untie the bows that they put on the tree so their Christmas wishes can come true. They walk over to Sam and Sophie's house uh, that Sam has finished re uh, renovating now. I think he's finished it. Uh, so they can show Sophie her gift. Sam and Sophie lock lips. <laughs> Sam asks her, now what? She says she has she has a plane to catch, a royal dinner to attend, and another toast to give. She also says that she has a royal jet at her disposal and asks Sophie if she would like to attend uh, the royal New Year's Eve party in Bolin. And she says to Sam, Sophie will need a chaperone. And ah, that is the end. <laughs> I know it was kind of weird at the end there because the way that they came together in the house, which was really nice, but it was uh, kind of like, okay, that's it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let, me, let me remove this. Let me remove this and get us. Let me get us back on the screen here. There we go. Um, so that's the end of the movie. And the question I'm left with here is how are they going to take this relationship further? She's not moving to Maine. He's not moving to Bolin. Uh, I guess they're going to have a long distance relationship, right? Must be. Yeah. I mean, and I think they should do a sequel though. If you have a, the, the princess, oh, movie, you've got to have a sequel. Yeah. They, yeah. To see if this long distance. Maybe, maybe Sam can go do woodworking for the, the family on their, <laughs> you know, their castle or something. Like maybe they need something special, like a, some special piece of wood that needs carved, you know, or something. Yeah. Maybe they can incorporate yeah. that into a movie. And yes. And, Maine to Europe, that's a really long distance relationship. So, yes, the sequel is needed to find out if they really did make it work. Right. Well, and honestly, the winters in Maine are rough, as we know. And I don't know if they're going to be able to get Internet service during that time. So I don't know how well that relationship is <laughs> going to last. <laughs> so uh, what, what, what did you think of this movie? 
I love the movie. I truly mm-hmm. loved it. I love anything about, you know, as a, as a young girl, I always dreamed of the prince and the castle and the princess yeah. and, you know, Cinderella, because that was my mother's favorite movie. And so we watched it all the time. So for me, anything that has like a princess or a prince or even anything in it, I, I absolutely love them. So mm-hmm. it was a real treat because Trevor was in the movie, uh-huh. um, but it also had that, you know, princess theme as well. So I love yeah. the movie. Do, do you enjoy all the royal movies i do i love yeah. all the royal movies oh, you know okay. i'm the biggest sap there is i oh, yeah. i just love you know the love story movies i love the romantic movies like you know i write poetry sometimes so i just i'm really in uh that kind of a mode when it comes to those stories that's why i love yeah. them so much because they they take you on an escape to a different place where you can imagine you know, yourself uh-huh. being in that position, you know what I uh-huh. mean? So even though it's not reality, but it takes you away and, and gives you that good feeling that you're looking for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, true. So, yeah. That's true. Now, what did you think about the chemistry between Trevor Boy um, and Matt? Um, I, the very beginning, I wish that and, and throughout it also, like when they had the scene by the Christmas tree, that's when I really felt like the chemistry of the two characters came together mm-hmm. and they kind of let their guard down to mm-hmm. kind of explore each other's emotions in a sense. Mm-hmm. So that was my favorite part. Up until that point, I felt like they were still just really distant with each other. Like they mm-hmm. were just two ships passing in the night. Hey, how you doing? Mm-hmm. Hey, how you mm-hmm. doing? You know, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But I think in that other that other scene is when they really started to get a little closer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now for me, this movie is strange because th- there's very little plot. <laughs> and, right. And what plot there is is a little ridiculous. <laughs> but I liked it because yeah. there's a cool plane. There's, there's a cute dog. Yes, there, the dog there, is absolutely there, cute. There, there, there's Fred Claus. Yes. And there's horseback right. riding. Right. It, it kind of it had little you know, things of each thing that during a Christmas movie you look for, you know, uh, you look for Santa, you look for animals, uh-huh. you look for snow, you mm-hmm. look for the relationship, um, the plane that was just kind of thrown in there. Cause you got to get mm-hmm. to the town somehow. Uh, um, yeah. but you know, like, yeah, all the little things about Christmas that people want to see was kind of in there. So mm-hmm. yeah. Definitely. Some of the, some of the things that didn't make sense is that Amelia not telling them that she was a princess right away, right from the get go. Right. Um, yes. And even Annie, she saw the jet at the airport, so she would kind of know, wouldn't she kind of know that this person? Yeah, she would have to kind of yeah. know that it was yeah. a diplomatic plane, and yeah, yeah. know that because when you work yeah. in that field, I'm sure because my son, oh, yeah. um, his partner is um, a flight attendant, so mm-hmm. he knows any VIPs coming in, and he knows who they are. He can't oh, yeah. tell anybody, but he definitely yeah. knows who they are. She could have yeah. went to her and said. Hey, I know who you are, but I'm not going to say anything, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. And, and she knows that the plane's destination is Bolin, some country in Europe somewhere. You know? Right. But um, again, there was no security. So maybe she didn't think so. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So I don't know what the big secret here is there with that. Also, the other thing that kind of didn't make any sense, we've already talked about, is them not asking who she is after Amelia's throwing out all these little clues like, private jet with a private quarters, never been on a date, mm-hmm. never had leftover pizza, strict father, keeps close tabs on her, yada, yada, you know, all that stuff. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you hear all of those things, you wonder like, really, who is she, who she is? Who's your father? Like, do I uh-huh. want to know? Are you like in the mafia or, you know, like what's going uh-huh. on? Here? Uh-huh. You know, like I would have to know, like who is coming into my home, <laughs> you know, and as a mother, you know, with, with Sam and Sophie, I'd be like, who am I letting in my home here? So, mm-hmm. yeah, that was a little far-fetched. I think they could have, you know, put maybe let Annie know the secret at least. Mm-hmm. So then it wouldn't be so far-fetched that a stranger's in their home and they don't care, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and yeah. that she don't care either. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I still I still did like it, though. And I thought Merritt and Trevor were cute together. I thought they were. Oh, they were very good. I think they yeah. really complimented each other. I really do. Yeah. And I and they had good chemistry. It's still not my mm-hmm. favorite chemistry, but between two of the characters that he or mm-hmm. characters he's been with, but yeah, yeah, I really did enjoy. And she's absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. And I but thought yeah. she did a good job with the accent. I enjoyed the accent. She like did I, absolutely. Like I, before, I couldn't do it. So yeah, I like can't I judge. said before, it sounded real to me. So yes. 
Yes. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed the movie, though. I thought it was really I, good. I always like Christmas movies where there's some sort of Santa figure in it. Yes. Either, either a Santa figure or an angel or something like that. I love those. Kind yes. Of movies. But yes. I was disappointed this one that Fred Claus didn't turn out to be the real Santa. How do you know, though? <laughs> well, I don't think I don't, they, you don't know. that. Well, I don't. They didn't. I don't think he was. Oh, you, see, you, now that's what I have was? to. I disagree with you because of the way they they said he was hinting like, oh, well, maybe you heard the sleigh bells. Where was his car? He was walking in the woods, Chad. So where was his car? Oh, that's true. That's true. And so, you know, and that's the sleigh, it, the sleigh goes invisible from what I understand. Oh, so okay. that normal people can't see it. So, you know, oh, you he know could what? have been that's out there. true. Because yeah. we see him and, he, and he, we, he was Santa to all the kids at that. Yes. During when yeah. they were shopping, he's had a Santa chair there. Yes. he. I think he was the real deal. I do. And then when did we see him again? Was he at the Christmas Eve party? He was at the he Christmas was. Eve He was. He was all dressed up, though. He was in a suit. I don't know if it was red, though. Yeah, see, on Christmas Eve, he would have been delivering gifts if he was really Santa, wouldn't he? Oh, uh, that's true. Maybe. You're right. So, all right. So, okay. I see your points. Okay. I see your points. Yeah. All right. So, so I'll Maybe leave it to Maybe he had a clone. Maybe I'll, I'll, leave a clone. It to a, I'll leave it to a question mark. Was he the real yes. Santa or not? Was How he was the real Santa or not? That's true. <laughs> I believe, though. <laughs> you're, 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 you're a believer. I love it. I am a believer until I die. So, yes. Now, the one thing that I really liked about this movie is that the two leads didn't get mad at each other. No, because they did. I always I always hate it. In the last 15 minutes of these movies, the two leads always get mad at each other. And then one of them like leaves or something or leaves town or does something. And then the last five minutes, they get they come back and they all get back together. You know, they get <laughs> they kind of make up in the last five minutes. And I always it's the chase, that. Chad. It's the it's, chase. I know <laughs> the writers feel there has to be some sort of conflict in order to write a good movie. And I I never liked that part of the movie, but I was so glad in this movie they didn't get mad mm -hmm. at each other. She's yeah, she they tells really didn't. Him, no, she tells him that she's a princess, and he's just like, okay, whatever. And then he says, you want to dance? You know, right, like it didn't even phase yeah. him, yeah, yeah, and that is, know. And that, like you that. know, honestly, in real life, if if somebody did that to you, like, I don't think I would be mad, I would have been, oh, now I get it, you know, <laughs> like now I understand, okay, like, you know, I don't think I would have got mad either, you know, yeah, I don't now think I understand I your why you're yeah. so like have people, like, your people, yeah, yeah. Are, yeah, yeah. Never yeah, ate never, pizza. Never been on a date and all that. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Um, okay. All right. Now the title for this movie is a little strange, I think. Jingle Bell Princess. Yes. Because the she does the jingle bells are on Storm the Dog. They're not her jingle bells. You know? Right. That so, is true. But there, um, and I had a couple questions for you too. Go ahead, make your point. Yeah. I don't want to interrupt you. Well, I was gonna ask you if you were gonna title this movie is there some other alternate title that you would come up with um boy that's a good question you put me on the spot <laughs> um i should have forewarned you ahead of time that this comes into, what's that i should have forewarned you ahead of time with, yeah with really that would have been it's okay though I, 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 <laughs> so the first thing that comes into my mind is i would have called it jingle bell present or presents maybe Oh, like P R E S E N C E, okay. maybe Jingle Bell presents, mm -hmm. but also or put present for like Christmas presents, you know, like maybe something like oh, that. Yeah. Or, um, oh. Well, and it's interesting because when I was doing research on this movie, um, it actually said that um, that she that Princess Amelia was drawn to nine year old twin girls. And I don't know if that's from the book, because the original the title book. it said was. His Jingle Bell Princess. Yeah, his yeah, his Jingle Bell Princess. Yeah, yeah that, so that, I was that's wondering, the title like, of, of the book. Yeah. yeah. So I was wondering why they would have taken the the twin aspect out of it, because you know I'm a twin mom, so I was like, what? They took the twins out, you know? So mm -hmm. I was curious about that, but um, but yeah, and then when I found out the actual title was his Jingle Bell Princess. Yeah. Um, then Bell I'm thinking, Princess. okay, he didn't hear the he didn't hear the Jingle Bells either. <laughs> No, but I kind of I think I may like that title better than just yeah Jingle Bell Princess. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, and I mean, I get why they say Jingle Bell because she did hear the Jingle Bells, and so yeah, she's she the heard Jingle them. Bell Princess. But, but yeah, J- yeah, Jingle Bell Princess makes it sound like she owns the Jingle Bells. They're her Jingle right. Bells. Right, they're hers. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. So really? I thought up a one title. I it was hard to think of a title for this one for some reason. The only one I could think of was No Questions Asked. <laughs> 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 that's a good one. <laughs> that, that was the, the theme throughout the entire movie. <laughs> or questionable jingle bells. <laughs> <laughs> or who is uh, Princess Amelia? Yeah, mi- mystery guest. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, uh, like it is, and you're right. M- mystery Christmas guest. Oh, if this was a lifetime movie. Ooh, oh, oh well, there you go. A lifetime movie? <laughs> Ooh, there's another, there's another question. Yeah. Um, now, what were you gonna? If this were a lifetime huh? movie, if this were a lifetime movie, uh, oh uh, mm. boy. Well, it ought, there could be the the wrong Jingle Bell Princess. That'd be one title. Yes. Except, except she, she 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 she's not the killer in this. Oh. <laughs> well, she, there wasn't one thing that Trevor did on his Instagram or one of them, and it's the scene where they're when she's in the room getting the frames. And he like comes into the room and he, he, the pictures and the stills that he put on his thing, it looked really creepy. And I was oh, like, really? oh my gosh, that really? scene definitely could be in a Lifetime movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, um, that was a little creepy, but yeah. Um, yeah. Well, she's, she's going with strangers all the time. So you could have the, t- the, the, the phrase stranger danger in there somewhere, you know? Right. Uh, you know, cr- or do like a, a stranger. Stranger like, danger Christmas or something like that. Right, right. <laughs> So what were you going to ask me? What was the questions you were going to ask me? Um, no, it was just about the title and um, about how the, when I researched it about the twins, that there was twin nine-year-old oh, girls, not yeah. just one girl. So I was yeah. curious of why they, they de- you know, didn't put that in there. Uh-huh. Well, they, when they, when they make, when they take a book and make a movie, they always change a lot of the book. Yes. Yeah. 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 But other than that, I mean, that was it. Um, I didn't really have any other questions about anything other than, you know, like you said, the, the questions um, and, and something else I remember too from it is when he was like, I think you're messing with me. Like he didn't really believe her either. So I think that's where a lot of his being aloof to who she was, it, it didn't face him at the end because he was like, I think you're just messing with me in that one scene. So I'm like, maybe that's where that came from too. But um, mm-hmm. that was one point I was going to make. Um mm-hmm. But yeah, not, I, everything else though. I mean, I thought it, I thought it, you know, flowed pretty not, well, and I love the the ribbon scenes and all of that. But yeah, the the no questions thing. That's a. Oh yeah, I was going to ask you if you had a favorite scene. Um, I have many of favorite scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that when she's in the woods, even though she's all by herself, that she has the dog there, like. I, you know, Mm -hmm. like if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you're like not supposed to be in the woods, you know, what is the one thing that you would make, make you feel comfortable? A a cute dog. So, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, you could have been a big bear in there in that moment. She could have ran and then, you know, did a different scene that way. But yeah. I love that opening scene. I thought it was so pretty when she walks out of the plane and walks into the woods and she finds the cute dog and then Santa walks up. I, I I like that scene. I thought that was, I thought that it looked really picturesque. Yes, very much. Yeah. I love that scene. Um, I'm trying to think of the other scene that I really, I love the attic scene. That one stays in my mind. Yeah, the attic scene. Yeah. Yes. You know, and, Mm Just because, you know, when you lose, lose somebody, you you have all those memories. And I think they mm-hmm. did a very good job of, of portraying that in that scene. Um, mm-hmm. It was very angelic, very majestic, you know, as she, mm-hmm. Sophie would say. Um, but I think my, I think my favorite scene was um, when they were painting and, or no, the Christmas tree scene, when they're by the Christmas mm-hmm. tree. Yeah, he he, he kind of lets his guard down and he's very... He's very open and very like honest with what he's asking her. And mm-hmm. I really feel like his character in that moment let his guard down from his whole like blocking of everything out because of the holidays mm-hmm. and the death of his wife. And yeah. I really felt like in that moment, that was a real raw moment for me. Mm-hmm. And I love that mm-hmm. scene. That's probably my favorite. Yeah, that scene, the scene where they're tying the ribbons on the Christmas tree, the some of mine, the horseback riding scene I liked. 
and the scene yes. where Annie uh, points to the manger and talks about the, the, yes. the story of yes. Christmas and taking a stranger mm -hmm. in who doesn't have a place to stay and things like that. Yes. Yeah, those, those, I, I, those, those were well done. Okay, so I don't like to rate movies, but if you were going to give this like uh, Jingle Bells, like maybe five, five, uh, five Jingle Bells or maybe out of ten Jingle Bells, whatever you want to do it, how many Jingle Bells would you give this movie? Um, what you do know, you want to say? Out of five or out of ten? How do you want to do it? Let's do it out of ten. Out of ten. All right, out of ten. Yeah, ten bells, is huh? better because you get more. See. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what would you um, do in this movie? I would say, and this is only because of some of the holes in the movie, but I would give it an eight. <laughs> you give it an eight? Yeah. Yes. Now, just on yeah. the basis of the movie itself. Now, as far as the characters, I love them. I would give them a ten. Mm -hmm. Um, but as far as the movie itself overall, as a whole, I would give mm -hmm. it an eight. Okay. Okay. I, I'm yeah. not gonna rate it because I, I I'm not good at rating. Stuff. Oh great! Well, so you let me rate it. Well, Thanks. I, I, I'm going by your rating. I I, I I I like your rating, but I am gonna say I've o I've only done three recaps of these Christmas movies, but I'm gonna put this one in second behind a kind-hearted Christmas, the one with okay. Cameron Matheson mm -hmm. and Jenny Garth. I'm gonna put that one second. So so far out of these great American Christmas movies from last year, I have number one. A, um, a kind-hearted Christmas. Number two, this one. Number three, royally wrapped for Christmas. The one with Jen Lilly. Yes. But I have like ten more movies to watch, so <laughs> so 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 that ranking is going to change. Uh, <laughs> as or not? Through. Maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. That's true. Maybe not. Well, cricket. This took a lot longer than I thought. Bees. Geez, thank you so much for your patience. You know, this is the first time I've ever done this kind of recap with someone else. So I didn't know how long it was going to take, you know, usually right. I do it by myself. It takes like 30 or 40 minutes, but going back and forth with someone else, man, it takes a long time. It does. Well, thank yeah. you so much for having Next. me on here. It was such an honor and pleasure to be here. Um, I love talking with you about movies in general, but also because of Trevor Donovan, you know, I am a huge fan. Um, you know, I have to give a shout out to Trev Dono fans because we are a loyal group and, uh, we're kind of like the Heinies with Tyler Hines. So, um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, we support, you know, Trevor and we support all of everything he does. And anytime we can help promote him in such a positive light, because he is an amazing, amazing person. I mean, he has a whole new upstanders program that's oh, out yeah, there that's now. And yeah, it's just, yeah. yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. And I love the fact that GAC uh, is supporting him and his efforts to, mm -hmm. you know, bring bullying so, to the surface of what mm -hmm. it really is. So yeah. I really, really, I think it's amazing. There's yeah. so many good things that are going to come from it. And I feel like being a part of it is such a blessing. So thank you for letting mm -hmm. me come on here today and have fun with you and recap, you know, a movie <laughs> and, um, yeah, so if you ever want me back, I'm I'm willing and able, and uh, I can't wait to see you in uh, Palm Beach. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ne next time we do this, we'll do a shorter recap and talk more about what we liked and what we disliked about the movie. Okay, sounds yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. You're going to be, so. be at Roma Drama in June. Yes, in Palm Beach, I am. So I will see you there. I look forward to, to seeing you there. Absolutely. And you never know, maybe we'll do this again, you know, before, before okay. you never know, but All I'll right. definitely, definitely see you at Roma Drama. Oh, you definitely will. Well, Chad, again, thank you so much. And uh, thank you, GAC family for, you know, everything that you guys do. And I'm so happy to be a part of it. So thank you. Great. And thank you, Gackers, for being here. And until next time, you keep the faith, keep smiling and keep yakking and gacking.